Before we get started, I just want to say thank you so much for all of the support that you continue to give. And if you aren't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. It's completely free and it really helps the channel. Also leave a like and a comment on this video if you want to help the algorithm. I also just really like talking to you guys and hearing from you all. And without any further ado, let's listen to some scary stories. Last weekend, my five-year-old and I went tent camping in the Uintas northeast of Utah. The weather was overcast weather. By the time we got done paddleboarding, we made our way back to camp. Once we got back to camp, I couldn't shake this feeling of unease. I mostly shrugged it off, thinking I'm overthinking the safety of my child. One thing to point out, there was a trailer and a truck close to us, but I never saw anyone throughout our experience from there. At around 8 p.m., we started our campfire. We roasted broths and ate snacks. During this time, I would think I heard a crack or a subtle movement and thought it was just the embers popping. Once the sun finally set, I noticed it was completely pitch black outside the reach of our campfire, most likely due to the overcast weather. At this point, I decided it's time to pack up our food and take it to the car. But I had this sudden feeling that I was being watched and I decided to turn my headlamp light on. I faced 30 degrees to the right in front of me. About 10 to 50 feet from us, I see a small bush-like tree. I want to explain. This small bush-like tree was not thick or sturdy enough for something big to lean on or climb onto. And above the tree, standing behind it, I see two big circle white eyes with a hint of purple staring straight at me. The animal creature was far enough from the glow of the fire that I couldn't see the silhouette of a body, but it was close enough that it was odd behavior and it was only seconds from us if it ran towards us. My first thought was that it was a bear standing on its hind legs, just being curious. It looked to be eight feet tall or so. As I had my light facing the creature, who was abnormally close to our campsite, I grabbed my kiddo and bear spray and told my kid that there's a bear behind the tree and assured him that we would be fine. This creature just watched us intently Suddenly, a few seconds later, my intuition screamed, Get out now! I then started walking backwards towards my car and told my kid to walk slowly with me. The creature made no movement and tilted its eyes on us as we moved away until my light could no longer reach it. I can't explain this new type of fear I was experiencing. It was unnatural. I think prioritizing my boy's safety allowed us to get to the car in a much more composed manner. Once in the car, we waited 30 minutes to see if it would come to the campsite to look for food, but nothing happened. I thought perhaps it left and we could sleep in the car to be safe. I decided that I'm going to try and grab blankets from the tent, put out the fire, and we can pack out first thing in the morning. I thought wrong. The campsite from the car was about 150 feet away. To the right of us were big trees, and to the left of us is tall grass and brush. I get out of the door and turn my headlamp on. My light shines towards the brush, and laying low in the brush, I see the white eyes again staring up at me. I decided to try and act big and yell out at the creature but it made a move towards me, which in return made me jump back into the car and reverse. I tried to shine my car lights towards it and couldn't see anything. I decided to find help. I drive down and find a friendly fellow dad camper who was happy to help me pack up my things to leave. He arrives with a much brighter flashlight and his truck. As I am packing, he sees the eyes and mentions there's two of them. He states they're not moose, deer, cougars, and if it's a bear, it's really odd behavior, and he doesn't know exactly what they are. 
I face towards where he is shining the light, and I see a second pair of white eyes. At this point, I am terrified. One of them is standing tall, while the other is lower. This time, they are much further back, as if they now know there's a new reach limit to the light devices being used. It wasn't until the lower set of eyes decides to stand up and be much taller than the first one, looking monstrous. This made my new friend very uneasy, and he quotes, This has got me on edge. Let's just throw everything in your car and leave. The whole time, while we were packing out, I would catch these creatures making a perimeter around us. They just walked around the campground in circles, waiting for something, it seemed. To give some perspective on the scenario, we live in an apartment complex at the edge of town in Illinois. Right next to us is a woodsy area full of coyotes and deer, and lots of birds, so it's pretty lively. Last night at 3 a.m., my fiancé went outside to grab a case of water from the trunk of our car. She claimed she heard someone say, Hello! in a girl's voice, coming from the woods. She couldn't see anything, but she replied back, confused, saying hello back. Whatever it was ended up saying, Can somebody help me? And that's when she got the chills and ran as fast as she could back into our house. Right before she entered the house, she said she heard it again, with the voice getting closer and asking for help. But instead of a normal girl voice, it turned into a girl voice that didn't even sound real. And she couldn't explain the change in the voice. She said afterwards, thinking about it, that her voice sounded familiar, but she couldn't point out whose voice it was. I live somewhere in North Carolina. It's not a small city by any means, but it's basically a highway town at its core. I've lived here for 10 plus years. On the night in question, I was with my ex. We'll refer to her as Z. This was right around the time when COVID-19 restrictions had yet to be fully lifted. So Z invited me for a walk. She was finishing up her online courses for the semester one being physical activity, so we'd often walk around her neighborhood to reach a daily amount of steps or something. Anyway, we head out on this walk. It's around 7 to 8 p.m., so on our way out, the sun is already setting. We stick to the street, as there isn't a sidewalk and we're just walking through the neighborhood. I've been down this area hundreds of times, I've drove there nearly every day to be with Z during the pandemic. It's just your average single story, cookie cutter, every house looks identical neighborhood. On our way back to the house, it's dusk, a weird time of day, especially on this evening. It was almost a gray looking atmosphere, but still illuminated enough to see the streets. Z is on a phone call for the entirety of the way back so I'm just taking in my surroundings and waiting for the walk to be finished. That's when I see it, whatever this thing was. About three houses down, mid-jump, arms and legs fully outstretched and leaping across the street. It lands on the other side in an instant, with barely enough time to register that anything had even happened at all. At the time, it felt like a hallucination, something fictional that my brain had just conjured up out of boredom or lack of visual content. It happened so quickly, but this flash frame is burned into my memory now and is something that I'll probably never forget. Firstly, it was huge and 100% silent. I only caught sight of it flying across the street and landing underneath a car. It was fully outstretched and took up almost the entirety of the street. Even with its hands on the ground, 
its rear legs were still stretched from the jump and extended far beyond the halfway point of this two-lane road. I can only guess the size of this thing was 10 to 20 feet in length. It looked extremely thin, but startlingly human from the waist up, 100% dark gray. Its arms seemed to be car length, with large claws, and its legs were bowed in a way that reminded me of a dog. The only feature I couldn't make out was its face. It seemed completely black, but scarily human. Again, at the time, I had no idea if what I saw was some sort of weird animal, or just a hallucination. Even so, I kept my eyes glued to where I had seen this hallucination land. As I got closer and closer to the car, I almost wanted to freak out. Z was still on the phone though, so I decided to keep quiet and inspect the car for myself as we walked by. I turned my head as we slowly passed the vehicle. At this point, I'm convincing myself that what I had seen couldn't be possible, but I just couldn't bring myself to peer and look under that car. As we walk away, I turn back a few times, really trying to process if I lost my mind for a moment or not. By the time we got home, I almost feel embarrassed. Did I just have a stare down with a car for absolutely no reason? By the time we walk inside Z's house, she's off the phone. We were kind of bummed that our walk was void of conversation, so we just catch up and converse for the next half hour. The hallucination had almost completely left my mind at this point. We just ended up going about our usual business. Honestly, I was just happy to be spending time with my partner. I was ready to accept that what had happened earlier was nothing more than my imagination. I had forgotten about the experience almost entirely, until Z asked me out of almost nowhere, Did you see something jump across the street earlier? This all took place a few days ago still unsure as to what's going on. Anyway, I was sat in my room playing some Xbox when I heard what sounded like a dying animal coming from outside. I heard it a few times earlier that day, but this time it was much louder and much more aggressive. This of course freaked me out, so I went outside to investigate. For context, my window leads to my backyard, which is right next to a laneway, separated only by a crappy little fence. I walk outside and head to where my window is to find my dog going buck nutty at the fence, barking and scratching. The strange noise had stopped, but I realized that a bunch of other dogs in my street were also going crazy. I initially thought that maybe some strays were fighting and one had got injured, so I stuck my head over the fence to have a look, but nothing was there. I calmed my dog down and headed inside to the front window that looks out onto my street. Mind you, this window is quite hard to spot from the street, which makes this next bit extra freaky. The dogs in my street were all still going crazy, so I looked out the front window, expecting to see some dogs chasing each other or something like that, but all that I saw was a strange looking man walking down the road. His back was turned to me, and I stared for a bit, trying to analyze the situation. That's when, out of nowhere, he turned full 180 and made direct eye contact with me. When his eyes met mine, I quickly ran from the window. I gathered my thoughts for a second or two and decided to look back out and see if he was still standing there. But nothing. No one. He was gone. The time between me leaving the window to me looking back to see nothing was much too short for him to have left. This whole experience left me quite shook and confused as to what I actually witnessed. When we were young, my cousins and I had a bush house at the end of the back garden 
just before the garden opened up on the heath. Due to me being a full-time wheelchair user from birth, it was Grand's idea that instead of having a treehouse that had to be climbed, it would be safer and more practical to have a bush house that all of us kids could use. Even though we protested greatly, although I am disabled, I frequently used to climb trees in my local parks and over the heath, with the help of my cousins, obviously. But Gran's word was final, and we never argued with her, as she was a beautiful and lovely matriarch, but also as tough as old boots, and very scary when pushed. So we busied ourselves on choosing an appropriate bush for our new play area. On selecting a perfect one, Gran delegated tasks to the older boys to clear the outer area of the bush, and also make a little hollow inside it, with pieces of spare wood on the ground to serve as a basic floor so that my little wheelchair could run safely and easily inside it. Gran was reasonably young at the time, and while the boys were doing the heavy work, she arranged us younger ones in getting furniture, supplies, and accessories to make our new play space cozy and comfortable for us all. A year later, and our bush house was in full use. In the daytime, us younger ones played in it after school. On weekends and holidays, and in the evenings and nights, it was a place where the older cousins could have some privacy, away from the eyes of Gran and Mom to do whatever they did. Our bush house was cozy, though. We got chairs, bean bags, and floor cushions, donated by relatives and friends of the family. We also had a small table that we made a tablecloth for, and our Auntie Jay made some pretty curtains that we hung up the best that we could. We even had a cupboard where we kept snacks in, and, only when older boys or mom were there, we were allowed to use the camping stove to heat tinned beans and sausages, or pot noodles up and make tea. Gran's bingo friend Jean donated a hand-me-down rug. It was shabby and out of date, but we thought it was beautiful. It was slap bang in the middle of summer holidays, probably in early July, when this happened. L and I were seven, and G was eleven. Our older cousin G's brother, A, was there earlier, but by three o'clock, he had grown tired of hanging around us and had gone out with his mates. The three of them were coming back later to make us all dinner on the stove. Elle and I were sitting at the table playing beggar your neighbor with a pack of playing cards that we got from the living room cupboard. And G was sitting in the corner of the bush house on the beanbag, reading the secret garden. It was just a normal day at home. Nothing unusual or odd occurred until around four when we all heard a sound that was at odds with the peaceful scene. It was between a growl and an owl's hoot and a man mumbling. We weren't particularly outdoorsy kids, being born and raised in the outskirts of urban London, but being bright little girls, we all knew that owls are nocturnal creatures and the accompanying sounds that were mixed with the hoots didn't come from the same bird. The weird sounds were joined by a furtive and stealthy rustling coming from the back of the bush house. Actually, it was really near to where Ji was sitting, and she jumped up, stifling a scream by covering her mouth with her hands. We also saw a dark, dog-like size and shape through the dense foliage of the back of the bush house, which incidentally led straight onto the beginning of the heath, as I said earlier. The strangest thing about this figure was that it was very present and rather ethereal, almost as if the figure was attempting to hide intentionally. Also, throughout this period, there were no other natural sounds, no bird song, no insect sounds, and no background human noise. Being right in the center of a council estate, you could always hear people talking, cars revving, and dogs barking, all the regular noises of urban community living. But at the time, it was as if the entire world had paused, and us three were the only conscious and present ones, along with the mysterious figure. 
We didn't know what to do, but we gathered together, and both G and L took one handle of my wheelchair and pulled me back out of our bush house, not taking our eyes off the translucent figure as we went. When we were free from the bush house and close enough to home for us to feel out of danger and safe, we just looked at each other, very doubtfully. G suddenly said, Stay here. Don't move or speak. She ran to the garden shed and climbed up the side to the manky, rotting roof. I completely lost it, letting out a squeal of utter fear. Quick-witted as usual, Al put her hand over my mouth and hushed me. Al and I watched while G looked over the hedgerow, which divided our back garden from the beginning of the heath. From our position, her face was clearly visible. G's expression was a mixture of confusion, surprise, and fright, and her pretty brown eyes looked troubled. We waited for G to come back to us before asking her in earnest what she saw. She didn't answer straight away, but when she did, she said, It was so strange. I didn't see anything. No dogs, no other animals. She paused, her young mind trying to summon the words to explain what she witnessed. There was a man. I saw the back of him walking away towards the iron fence. My seven-year-old's mind found it hard to comprehend what G was saying, and one look at L told me she was experiencing the same. We both said together, What man, G? What did he look like? G sighed, biting her lip. A habit she still has today, when she's anxious, worried, or trying to explain something tricky or difficult. I didn't see him properly. His face and all that. I only saw his back. He did have really long, scruffy hair, though. Her eyes wandered over nervously to the end of the garden, leading out to the very public heath. Elle and I both followed G's gaze. We all shuddered. Nobody spoke for ages. For a long time, we sat in silence, G and L sitting on the back step, and me in my wheelchair alongside them. Suddenly, I noticed something and exclaimed to the others, Everything is back to normal. Listen. We all listened. The regular everyday noises had returned. The world appeared to have resumed business as usual. A while later, A and his two mates came back, and, sensing some tension between us, they asked us what was up. We did tell them everything, and two of them ran out to the back to have a look around. They were gone for about 45 minutes. When they returned, they said they didn't see anything, no strange man, no animals, nothing unusual or dodgy at all. We spent the rest of the day hanging out with the boys, eating dinner in the bush house and later watching films and eating junk food. We didn't tell mom about the experience until a few years back, long after we were grown, and we still don't know, or can't explain, what happened that day.